So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, basically what I'd like to do is show you guys how to identify the vertex, axis symmetry, the max, the min, as well as um, the graph. So as well as graph it and then identify domain range. So we're going to talk about everything on this. Now, I know graphing was not a part of it. However, since nobody asked me to do 1 through 6, I do want to go through graphing and make sure at the same point. However, for all the answers, 1 through 8, the first two things you guys want to do is identify the vertex and the axis symmetry. So that work is exactly the same. And all you guys need to understand for identifying the vertex and the axis symmetry is go back to your notes. If you guys remember, I provided you with the vertex form of a quadratic. And remember, the vertex form of the quadratic told us what the vertex was, h comma k. So when I'm looking at my problem, to find the vertex, all I got to do is identify what is h and what is k. Well, you guys can see I'm not adding or subtracting the numbers, so we can think of that as adding 0. So therefore, my k is 0 and my h is 2, right? Because it's x minus h, x minus 2. h is equal to 2. So my vertex in this problem is 2 comma 0. My axis of symmetry is x equals h. Well, I already know h, so that's x equals 2. Boom, done. That's very easy, right? Now, I am going to show you the graph, even though that wasn't part of the problem. But through 1 through 6, when you're graphing, the best thing to do is plot your vertex and write in your axis symmetry. So 1, 2, make a nice big point. Axis symmetry is the, what the, is the point that the graph is symmetrical about. So if you're having trouble graphing it, the best thing to do, as I mentioned, for like absolute value is just to choose two points to the left or to the right of the axis symmetry, plot them, and then you can go ahead and reflect them. Right? Yes? No? Maybe so? OK. However, um, you guys can go ahead and do that. And there's not a problem with that. But I wanted you, I provided you guys with My points are a little bit off. But I provided you guys with the parent graph for a reason, because I wanted you guys to understand that the parent graph is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. That's for the graph y equals x squared. Because if you plug in 1 in for x, 1 squared is 1. If you plug in 2 in for x, 2 squared is 4. right? So even though you could create a table for all of the problems 1 through 6, it's a little bit extra work. My advice was to transform the vertex to your new vertex. So you guys can see that instead of my vertex being at 0, 0, I've now shifted over, I've now shifted over to 2, 0. Then you just redraw the graph, unless you have an a. So my a, if you guys remember, since absolute value of a is larger than 1, that horizontally compresses your graph. right? Well, how does it horizontally compress my graph? If you guys can see here, my a is 1. So really. When I plug in 1 into for x and I square it, I just multiply it by 1, which is the same thing. But now that I have 4, whatever I plug in for x, and I, once I square it, I have to multiply that by 4. So basically, I'm going over 1. Instead of going up four or up 1, I'm now going to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Instead of going over 2, up 4, I would go over 2, up 16. right? So it'd be like really, really high points. Now here, um, since I know this points to the right, I can use the axis symmetry to reflect it. And I'm just going to use three points here because I don't have a graph that's big enough. So if you were to graph this problem, you didn't have to do that, but that's what it looked like. Yes? So basically, you just multiply your y uh, coordinate by, y. by 4. Yep. Yeah, basically what you would get when you plug it in. Unless you're going to plug it into like the whole problem. But basically, well, yeah, you basically plug whatever you plug in for x, multiply that by 4. And then if you had a k, though, you'd have to add or subtract as well. So you have to kind of take it out. Basically, the best thing, though, is find the vertex, which is easy. And then just plug in, you can plug in points and to utilize that. Um, so now they're asking for the max and min domain and range, right? Yep. So this vertex, is that a maximum or a minimum point? Minimum point. So you'd say the min is at 2 comma 0. So your vertex is always going to be your maximum minimum. But if the graph opens up, it's a minimum point. If the graph opens down, it's a maximum point. Now we need to talk about domain range, which I'm just going to introduce to you. Um, we will get into this in much more detail later. So if you're kind of having some confusions, don't worry. I didn't really mean actually to have you guys do domain range. 
the domain range is the set of all x values that make up the graph, meaning how wide do I need to expand this x-axis? Because is this graph going to keep on expanding, go to the left, to the right, as it goes up? Right, so the graph is going to go infinitely left and infinitely to the right. It's never going to stop expanding. So my domain is from negative infinity to infinity, or what we call all real numbers. But the graph is going to continue to go to the left all the way until it gets to infinity, negative infinity, and it's going to continue going to the right until it gets to positive infinity. The range is the set of all y values of the graph. So we want to write the range as the lowest y value compared to the highest y value. Well, to look at the lowest y value, we just need to look at the minimum point. The minimum point tells you what the lowest y value is, which is 0. Since 0 is a point, I'm going to use a, bra I'm going to use a bracket rather than a parenthesis. And then the highest point, that's going to go up to infinity. So that would be infinity. And that's all you guys had to do. Yes? 